After last week's opener, does this one keep up the pace and the quality? Now, now this is going to be a breakdown review of Star Trek Prodigy Episode 3, Starstruck, so if you haven't seen it yet, this will contain spoilers. As always, I'm Al, this is the Geek In Review, so let's get to it. Now, although we'd already seen them, I did enjoy the full titles because we didn't actually get them last week. We got quite that clever opener on the mind that I mentioned in my last video. Check it out if you haven't done it already. And hey, subscribe to the channel as well. So it picks up exactly where we left off. Janeway explains that she's a training hologram. Now, what's interesting about this scene is Jank and Pog doesn't seem to recognise that she's a human or know what a human is because he asks why her forehead's so flat. So it indicates that he's not actually from the Alpha Quadrant, or if he is, he certainly doesn't remember it. It also comes up later on as well, where he doesn't know that the Federation don't have money or currency. So this show is still raising quite a few questions, and I'll get to more of those later on in the video. Now, the hologram herself, Janeway, doesn't actually recognise that they aren't Starfleet. She thinks that they're cadets. And I don't know if I believe this or not. I think she maybe knows, and she's... She wants to get the protostar off the planet as well. I think there's going to be some reveals for this hologram. The way that she interacts with the crew, it seems that they have to ask specific questions to kind of get specific answers. So unless they have those questions in their head or they stumble across them, we're not going to get any reveals too soon. But the hologram herself is pretty good. We get to see quite a lot of Janeway in the episode, although it isn't the Janeway that they're used to. This version is kind of like Google Assistant in a training level when you first start a new game. There are steps that she takes them through to help recognise and become more familiar with the ship and the systems. And the ship, oh my god, it looks fantastic and it's epic, but I'll get to that in a minute. But we find out that none of the crew know what the Federation is or where it's located. Janeway gives them a holographic light show and a huge exposition dump explaining what the Federation and Starfleet are. We also get quite a few easter eggs with ships popping up with Voyager, the Defiant, and for some reason the original Discovery, which is a bit odd. But Dal doesn't want to follow Janeway's lead, he wants to plot his own course. But we do see star charts in this, but we don't know how far away they are from places like Earth or exactly where they are in the Delta Quadrant. This is one of the questions that hasn't yet been answered in the show, along with how did the protostar get there, why is the Diviner after the ship, and where the hell is the crew and Captain Jagoti? Because I'm still convinced that the Jagoti, even, is going to be the captain of the protostar. But while Dal wants to plot his own course, the rest do want to seek out the Federation to 1. return the ship and 2. protect their own backs as well because obviously they know that the Diviner is after them. We don't actually get a lot of the Diviner in this episode but what we do get I really did enjoy. I'm really familiar with John Noble and I love his work and I thought he was a little bit flat last week, I didn't really feel that threatening and at the time I just chalked it up to hate as a kid's cartoon. But in this episode, we do get to see this guy's wrath and this guy's sort of dedication to his cause. But going back to the ship, we see a lot of it and that's one of the joys of the animated shows is that we'll always be able to see everything instead of just walking talks down a corridor because live action just doesn't have the time or more importantly the budget. Things like Astrometrics when the next generation was on. But hey, it seems they don't even have a budget for the engine room in Discovery after four seasons. But what I'm seeing of this ship, I'm loving so far. But again, there's still these questions. We learn that the ship has two warp cores and it's also powered by something else, but we don't know what that is yet. And it has a vehicle replicator on board, which as you can imagine is a pretty handy tool and does answer the question about how they replaced all those shuttles on Voyager. But for some reason, they just forgot to mention that in seven years episode is all about letting these characters breathe and everyone does get their time and their scenes. Rock Talk in particular stands out for me. There's one scene that I'm not going to spoil but the bit where Rock Talk confronts Gwen about not standing up to her father and Gwen explains that she thought they were all criminals and not just prisoners that had been abducted. Man, that was really good but there's a bit when Rock Talk is replicating food for the first time and you know the scene if you've seen it, I'm not going to ruin it because again I know that this isn't available everywhere and a lot of people haven't watched this yet. But Rock Talk and Jank and Pog are turning into my favourites. So far it's only a few episodes in but they're absolutely standouts for me. But Dal's course ends up taking them off course into the pool of a star 
and he doesn't want Janeway's help at all. He basically sees the Federation as one more thing that's going to try and control him and tell him what to do while he wants to make his own destiny. And after last week I thought I was going to really enjoy Dal, but he's really starting to piss me off in this episode. His attitude of being really defiant and just not listening. I can't really see this continuing and I hope it doesn't really get picked up in the later episodes, but as always, we're going to have to wait and see. The characters and the voice actors are really great, as I mentioned, Jang and Paul gets a few memorable one-liners, Zero as well, Zero, and is a very data feel, especially in the way that Zero speaks to the rest of the crew and tries to understand the situation that they're in, but Dal does seem to have totally changed his tune a lot, he does get his feet back on the ground literally after the gravity fails and he learns that he does need help from Janeway. And I know I said this quite a lot in my last episode and I'm going to keep saying it so I do apologise but this show looks great. The whole scene where they're escaping the start was top notch and we all know that Janeway loves riding a shockwave. But after the first longer episode I really enjoyed the pace of this one although... But after the longer sort of feature length episode I really enjoyed the pace of this one even though it was only about 25 minutes. This was all about building up the team and what a team. I can't wait to see more of the crew and more of the ship and maybe get an answer to all those questions. So if you do want to keep up with more reviews of Star Trek Prodigy, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you want to reach out to me, you can follow me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews. My name's Al and thanks for watching.